Good morning, everyone. Good Welcome morning. to the Cathedral of St. John Bergman's. It's great to have you here this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, uh, we're set to learn an awful lot about um, an issue that affects so many people in our community and in the St. John's Parish and in Shreveport and, and far beyond, as you will hear. So myself as a Catholic priest here, um, uh, with so many parishioners, I have the wonderful opportunity of meeting so many people, as you can imagine. And sometimes, obviously, we have family members who are ill, sometimes family members who suffer from Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, dementia, any number of illnesses. And I have uh, people come to me asking questions. You know, my mother, my father um, is now at the stage of Alzheimer's. Can, can he or she still receive Holy Communion? Well, I mean, the answer is yes. It's a big yes. You know, sometimes you, you might need to help a loved one come forward to receive, but um, um, sometimes people say, you know, can they receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick? And, and again, it should be an obvious yes, but these are some questions that I get from time to time. Can they go to confession? But I also have this, where the child of someone who has Alzheimer's uh, comes to me to speak with me one-on-one, -on -one, maybe sometimes even in confession. And, you know, is it a sin, the frustration I have with regards to a loved one who, and I, here I am taking care of them, and Father, I'm at my wit's end, and I need God's help and grace, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, the more I think we learn about the actual uh, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, uh, and the difference between the two, the more I think we will be able to pastorally care for not only those who suffer with um, or, or live with uh, Alzheimer's, but those who are the, the caregivers. And I know some of you are caregivers and some of you are learning more about, about this. Maybe some neighbors or fellow parishioners you know um, are in this situation. I, I did a, even a little simple um, uh, Google search. Of, of course, we're at a Catholic church right now, though this particular um, um, topic is for everyone. In fact, it's being recorded, and I hope many people are watching this. But I did do a little simple Google search, Alzheimer Catholic prayer. And it was quite interesting because the number one prayer that I found was a prayer of at, from the perspective of the person with Alzheimer's. And, you know, please don't forget me. Treat me as, you know, remember I was once a husband or wife. I was, you know, I can still hear you. Maybe I don't understand everything you're saying. I mean, it, it was like a whole litany. It was very beautiful. And so I, I highly encourage you, uh, no matter your faith tradition, you, you can Google the same thing. You probably already have a lot of those type resources. So I, I hope that we will be able to host uh, uh, yet another one of these uh, mornings here. But it's great to have this first one to kick it off. And, um, and thank you for your presence. Thank you for watching this as well. And I wish to introduce to you Paulette, I think many people already know her. So uh, the director of the bridge, uh, which is just only a couple of blocks away. So uh, you'll hear more about it. Thank you for organizing this and thank you for your presence here this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Father Keener. Welcome everybody. And um, so, um, I want to say thank you, of course, to St. John Bergman's for having us, and especially to Father Peter, who stepped forward and realized we needed this forum for the community. So we appreciate him offering the parish hall for us. Uh, Cassie Key in the back there helped us organize it, as well as Dottie Stanford and um, Carol Gates. So our appreciation to them. At this time, I want to recognize our staff that is here. We have Christy Kennedy in the back in the colorful blouse. She is our office administrator and what we call a care navigator. And you'll find out more about that. Laura Gaucher in the green jacket here is our uh, licensed counselor. And um, she's also our program director. Uh, Stacy Hand here 
is um our dementia educator and she has years of experience um with this topic and um we're pleased to have our board member vicki reck where did vicki go she stepped out she's our vice president of our board of directors and then um elizabeth disro who is the executive director of um, the center for brain health and i love saying that she's a neuroscientist because not many people can say they work with a neuroscientist <laughs> So um, you have, uh, in front of you, you have uh, paper, pens, um, you have um, a little half sheet of information as we start talking about the different things about Alzheimer's dementia and our services. If you want more information on it, fill out that form and check off, and we'll pick up that form at the end of the conference. Um, you're going to get a green bag when you leave here. And that bag is full of information for you. It also has the handouts of what we're all we're going to discuss today. So you're free to take notes, but also know that you're going to have all the notes of the handouts from um, our staff here um, to help you with that. If you take a green bag, but you don't need it, please don't throw it away. Give it to someone else. Maybe you don't need it right now, but maybe you have a friend. If you, Or take an extra bag, because we want this information to get out to everyone that needs the information. Okay. Um, our agenda, I put the agenda on the table, but basically um, I have a few minutes to talk about the services of the bridge, and then Laura Gaucher is going to talk to you about um, the uh, di the difference, the aging process and versus dementia. And then Stacy Hans is going to talk about the ways to reduce Alzheimer's um, for you. And then um, Elizabeth Disbro is going to talk about the research opportunities. So, but before we begin, we're going to take a memory quiz. As a group, don't panic, okay? I'm gonna give you three words and I want you to remember them. Don't write them down on your pad. Pencils down, pens down. <laughs> and um, we're going to, I'm gonna give you three words and we're gonna repeat it together. And at the end of my uh, presentation, you're just gonna read it back to me or say it back to me. You ready? Banana sunrise chair. Okay, say it with me. Banana sunrise, sunrise chair. chair. One more time. Banana, Banana sunrise, sunrise chair. chair. Okay, easy enough. Okay, so um, I'm so glad to introduce to you who we are and to the people that are watching online. We're the Bridge Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center. And um, we are located at 851 Olive Street here in the Highlands around here in this area. It's wonderful. We have a wonderful building there. And in this building we have with us um, the Center for Brain Health with, at LSU Health Shreveport. It's a very unique collaboration. I don't know if there's another one like it in, in around here or in the States. So what we've done is we wanted to provide a wraparound service for people that are affected by Alzheimer's or dementia. So at the Bridge Alzheimer's Dementia Resource Center, we're your resource side. We're gonna provide those social services, we're gonna provide education and resources, and then you can go to the clinical side and uh, maybe qualify for some research tests, some clinical trials. Uh, but what it is, it's a wraparound service and it's all in one service uh, just for you, the community. Um, this, uh, where both of us are nonprofit, the Bridge Alzheimer's Dementia Resource Center is a nonprofit organization. So all of our services here are free to you. Everything that I tell you about is going to be free. And we are funded um, by foundations that provide grants to us, and we're also funded by donors. Um, so we've been in this building for two years now, and um, we hope you have noticed that a lot of people stop the breaks when they see the sign and come in to, uh, to see us and visit with us. So let me tell you a little bit about our mission at the Bridge Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center. Our mission is to provide resources, education, and support services for those affected by Alzheimer's and dementia and caregivers and family members, okay? 
and also to create community awareness about the disease here and we were in north we service northwest louisiana seven parishes so we are what we do is we're going to be the bridge for family members whenever a diagnosis is made right we're the one that can help you with the resources that you need a lot of times when a diagnosis is made you don't know where to go to right a diagnosis is made there's not an instructional manual for you so this is where you have to go everybody knows someone with dementia and I'm also one my father had dementia and I took care of him when he was in his senior years but we didn't realize he had dementia until the first time was when his grandchildren my daughters came running in from school and they said hey Opa how are you and he looked at them blankly and said who are you and they thought he was kidding because he was a big big jokester with them and they said oh Opa you know who we are they said and they ran upstairs and did their thing and later they told me about it and then looking back and I didn't have anywhere to go to I had no one to turn to so we don't want this to happen to anyone now here in Northwest Louisiana we're the only organization of its kind that can provide these services to you the closest association that's like ours is Baton Rouge so we're very glad and honored to be here to serve the community our vision I love our vision our vision is we're creating a community where no one affected by Alzheimer's or dementia makes the journey alone we're gonna be there with you we're gonna hold your hand through this and we're going to help you so let me just tell you about some of the services we have we have a local resource directory and that lists all the places that can help you in your journey um, with Alzheimer's and taking care of someone and um, we're printing a new one now so we'll have one out soon and we'll get it in the mail to you now that we have your information we'll get your resource directory we have monthly education workshops at our office for caregivers it's wonderful we always choose a topic that pertains to Alzheimer's or dementia for instance in May the first Wednesday in May we're having the Shreveport Police Department out um, and they're going to talk about how they can help when your loved one um, wanders off or leaves the house what can we do when that happens so um, it's a it's going to be a very interesting topic and we invite you to come out to it if you can and if someone is taking care of a loved one at home and they can't uh, they haven't find it difficult to leave we'll record it but also you can bring your loved one with dementia to the workshop with you because we have an activity room set aside and we're just gonna play dominoes and listen to music and just have some fun so um, we want this to involve everyone and it gives you a little bit of respite I know it's only an hour but an hour of your time to learn something new about um, dementia is very very powerful uh, we have an annual education workshop it's held in November and we bring in internationally known experts to talk about dementia and Alzheimer's as well as local speakers and these three in the room will be speaking as well at the annual conference um, we have community forums like this that we go around um, we love art and music programs we provide um, we paint we sing we have jam sessions um, and that's another time where you can bring uh, if you need to bring a loved one with you you can do that we have a speakers bureau if you want us to come out and speak and um, we have all sorts of educational materials and if there's something that we that we don't have at the current time we were we will research it for you and find it for you and not only that we're going to help you navigate your way through the financial part of the disease the legal aspect the housing and also hospice like I said we're the bridge that's going to bridge you over with the resources you need in your journey one of our best 
services that we have is a support group for caregivers. It's wonderful. It's a time where they come together in a non-judgmental zone. And you know what they caregivers find out? They find out they're not alone in this. A lot of them, they're so they're very frustrated. They don't know what to do. You know, the their loved one keeps repeating the same questions over and over and over. And we have advice for you to help you with things like that. And so um, these support groups, and we have uh, eight of them, and they meet monthly, some meet twice monthly, and we have a list in your uh, little green bag that lists all the support groups. So maybe if you have a friend or someone that could use a support group, uh, we highly encourage you. It's really good for your mental health, which is another area that Laura specializes in for you. Um, we let's say that you're fine right now and um, you're just but there's something nagging you because maybe you're not remembering things as quickly or coming up with words as quick as you used to maybe you've had COVID and you have a little brain fog so what we can do is we can do a memory screening with you it takes about 15 to 20 minutes it's very similar to the ones that they use at a doctor's office and then once you're done we'll give you the results and you can take them to the doctor. And um, if you fall, you know, if you, I say pass, then um, hooray. And uh, you, you've got a benchmark now. And you can come back in a year later and see how you're doing. And, um, but if your results aren't as well, that's where the, you can go into your doctor. But it's important to remember, we do not provide a diagnosis. We're just giving you the resources to be able to help you through this. Um, so, uh, again, all these services that we have here are free of charge, and we're just so happy and honored to be here um, for you. I think I've covered most of the programs that we have, and we're going to get to the meat of all this information that we're wanting to give to you, but you know what's next. It's our memory quiz. <laughs> Do you all remember what those words are? Okay, what are they? You say it together. Banana. Banana. Sunrise chair. Very good. You all passed. All right. Uh, next, we have Laura Gaucher, our um, counselor and our program director. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Like Paul had said, my name is Laura Gaucher, and um, I'm a licensed counselor and also the program director for the bridge. And we are going to be talking a little bit about the normal aging versus dementia. So raise your hand if you've lost something in the last 24 hours. A key, a phone, a wallet. We get asked that question all the time, and it says, if I lose my keys, if I lose my phone, do I have dementia? The short answer, no, because we lose our keys, we misplace things all the time, and it has to do a lot that we are a multitasking society, and we cannot do one thing with fidelity when we're doing 10 other things at the same time. I'm 33 years old, and I had one night where I was cooking dinner, unloading, reloading the dishwasher. The TV was on, and my one-year-old was on the floor. Do you really think I was doing anything of those well? No. I got by, but we as a society, we're trained that we have to multitask. We have to do many things at once. And when we do those things, we're not doing any one thing at 100%. So our brains are not functioning at full capacity when we're trying to do three or four things at one time. So obviously as you get older, your cognitive abilities change. Something that you could do well 10 or 15 years ago may take you a little bit longer to do now. 
um, whether it be learning something new or doing something that you've done for a long time, our brains are not as quick as they were 10 or 15 years ago. And so it takes us longer to do things, longer for us to get through that process. So I've got, and this is just a small amount of things um, that we're going to be talking about, but we've got the, the normal aging aspect of it, and then we've got the possible signs and symptoms of dementia. Um, so that first one, taking longer to recognize someone by name. Who's been in the grocery store and you see someone and you say, oh my gosh, they look so familiar. And they come up to you and you're like, hey, how are you? I've done that. And it is, is very, very common because probably when we were talking to that person, we were doing something else or talking to someone at that same time and their name did not implant or implant fully into our memory. So when we start to get concerned is when someone is looking at someone or they're not, they're like, I recognize them, but I'm not sure why. Or even after many hours has passed, they're not able to recognize that person's name. Those are one of the, the signs that we, um, we start to get concerned about with possible dementia. Like I said, mispla misplacing your keys occasionally. Um, everybody does it. When we start to get concerned as well is when you're finding your loved one's keys or even your own keys or phone in odd places, like in the pantry or in the refrigerator or in places where you, at that moment in time, someone thought that they were keeping them safe, like a purse, they were putting them in a safe place. And when they went to go back, 10, 15, 30 minutes, an hour later, they could not remember where they put those keys or purse or phone or whatnot um, because they weren't they they thought it was a safe place and then they were not able to rec recall where they put that item. Missing a bill payment occasionally, um, you know, we we've all done it in the past. The one thing that we see with a lot of people who have been diagnosed with dementia is that someone who is a, a stickler for paying their bills on time even um, early is missing multiple bill payments or they're paying them late or they're paying them multiple times in a month that's when we start to get concerned because you know that financial aspect is very important and someone who is suffering from those symptoms they want to keep their autonomy and they want to keep their independence and keep paying their own bills. Um, and they, they may get defensive when you say, well, you paid this bill two or three times and they don't remember doing that. And so they will get defensive and tell you that they're, you're not going to take over their money. And that is a, a, a hard per thing to do as a person is to give away that independence because we, as, as people like to be independent and do things our own way and in our own time. Getting distracted easier than you used to. So 10, 15 years ago, you were able to focus pretty well on one or two things at a time and you were able to do it right then and there and with fidelity. Um, as you're aging, that able to focus on on that topic decreases as you age um, but with someone who has been diagnosed um, or has the signs and symptoms of dementia they are not even able to focus on a very small task for any length of time um, what we have seen with with some of our clients and things is that you give them something and whether they wanted to draw or play a game or something and they are able to do it for about five minutes and what is happening is that they are not able to focus they are also not able to comprehend what is going on on that paper whether it be a game or an, an art project or reading a book sometimes they're having trouble reading the words they can read the words but they're not understanding or comprehending what's going on in that book Having trouble multitasking. 
and we've kind of touched on this a little bit. As we age, we have trouble multitasking, doing multiple things at one time. Um, but what we have seen with people with uh, symptoms of dementia is difficulty with doing one task at a time. Or if you tell someone, hey, I need you to do A, B, and C, they will probably do A, B will be totally forgotten, and they may or may not get to C because they, they are only able to do one thing at a time, those one, one instructions, one directions, because their brain cannot take in that much, much information at a time. What we see um, with, with our clients and things is you have to be very clear, simple instructions, and you have to tell them one thing max two things at a time because their brain cannot take in any more information than that. So who who is ever not not remembering a word now but figuring out later. So if you're saying I, I need that and it's like right on the tip of your tongue and about five minutes later it pops into your head. Very, very quote unquote normal. I don't like the word normal. I'd say it's the the only thing that's normal is a washing machine cycle. But the quote unquote normal that it, it happens to everyone and like I said, your brain is aging and so it may take you a little bit longer to figure figure out that word. When we begin to we come become concerned is when that person is not able to recall that word or they call it someone something totally different. So say like um a tissue. We usually call it a tissue or Kleenex. They may call it a paper towel or call it something completely different because they cannot grasp that word out of their memory and so now they are just going to give it a word that, that comes to them. We see that a lot um, with dementia, the many different types of dementia, but it's because that part of the brain is no longer comprehending and can't get those words out of their brain any longer. Forgetting something you were told a while ago, so in, in your long-term memory. If someone says, yeah, I told you that, you know, a month ago that we were going out of town on this date. You're like, well, okay, I don't remember that conversation, but if you say so, that is, again, normal um, but we begin to get concerned again when someone's forgetting something that you just told them 5 10 20 30 minutes ago or a day ago or they're asking the same question repetitively over and over and you told them the same answer so you have a doctor's appointment and you say okay honey we have a doctor's appointment today at two o'clock okay and 10 minutes later, what time's our doctor's appointment? And every, about every five minutes, they're asking what the time that appointment is. And that's because they know that something is going on that day, but their brain is not connecting that they have a doctor's appointment that day, and it's at 2 o'clock. Because with someone who is diagnosed with dementia, they have no, the time perception is, is gone. They don't really have any concept of time anymore. So they understand that something's going on that day, but they will not remember what time it is, and they will ask you over and over and over again. And it, as a caregiver, that is very frustrating. So I know that uh, a lot of our caregivers, that's one of the things that they struggle with a lot is that their, their loved ones is asking them, are asking the same things repetitively. And what we always tell them is when they're, they're in a almost like on a hamster on a wheel over and over and over and over again. So we ask them to ask them a different question completely off topic and it will kind of cut off that that cycle and that wheel and they're able to to move past it. Doesn't always work, but more times than not it does help them move past that situation. And there are lots of medical issues that can have cognitive impairments. Um, obviously, you know, your tumors, blood clots, infections with the brain, um, urinary tract infections, especially in senior adults, your thirst for water, 
and for um just your overall thirst decreases as you age so you don't intake as much water and so you're more likely to get a urinary tract infection and with that urinary tract infection it happens very quickly and you can have hallucinations you get what they call delirium which comes on very fast you have cognitive issues and once that urinary tract infection is um cleared with antibiotics and sometimes even hospitalizations, their cognitive abilities will come back to normal. Drinking too much alcohol, there is actually a, um, a form of dementia that is because of, it's called alcohol-induced dementia and it has to deal with vitamin deficiencies and things with drinking too much alcohol, obviously for a long period of time and over years. Multiple head injuries, um, that one is very common with, um, oh shoot, with, uh, football players and with the, um, actually with soldiers in the military from all of the bombs and guns and things of that nature. Side effects from medications, thyroid deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, Depression is very common in older adults, and depression can actually decrease your cognitive abilities as well. Delirium, um, like I said earlier, it will come on very, very fast, very sudden, and what will happen is that person will lose cognitive abilities or they will not be staying awake a lot during the day. They're not acting normal, quote unquote. Um, they're not acting like themselves. And delirium can be treated and their cognitive abilities will come back to where they were. Um, but delirium is something that needs to be treated very quickly and it's a, a somewhat of a medical emergency. And so it needs to be treated right then and there. Surgery that uses general anesthesia that can affect your cognitive abilities. Um, multiple surgeries over um, months can change how your brain is working and taking in information. So just be cognizant of that, um, especially with the older adult community, anesthesia can, can affect that your cognitive abilities as well. And that delirium can come in with, uh, with the surgeries using general anesthesia. So if you have questions about yourself, or if you have questions about a loved one, a neighbor, a friend, anything like that, you know, please call us and can, you can schedule a memory screener. And, and like Paulette said, it is not a diagnosis, but it's a great place to start because it does give you that kind of black and white, something tangible to hold on to and say, you know, there may be some cognitive issues. It could be to physical reasons. And what we say next after you get that memory screener is to take that to your doctor, get some lab work done. And actually in your bag, um, Dr. Dispro has created a little quick and easy bookmark that you can have these, actually the physical reasons for cognitive abilities checked in your lab work. So those are things that are very easy to do and ask, to ask your doctor for. Um, once you've done that to rule out all the physical reasons for cognitive issues, um, if the doctor says that, you know, there's, there's still maybe some concern, give us a call back and we can talk to you about those things. We can tell you, you know, what the next steps are. We can make a plan and what we like to do is, you know, if you're concerned about cognitive dementia, Alzheimer's, anything like that, Give us a call, we'll sit down, make a plan, and have those small goals. That way you do not get overwhelmed. You do not think, oh my gosh, I have to deal with all of these things all at once. Um, we will help you kind of guide you and hold your hand through that process of financial, legal, finding the right resources and things of that nature. So, Paulette and I were kind of on the, the same idea. So what I want y'all to do is you're going to pair up with someone sitting next to you. Someone's going to be the speaker and someone's going to be the writer. 
And when I say go, I want the person who is the speaker to think of as many animals as you can in one minute. No pressure or anything. So y'all take a couple of minutes and, and pair up. <laughs> Does everybody have a partner? <laughs> Let me get my, my timer. Hold on. And then once once we do this, we'll we'll talk about it for a second. All right, is everybody ready? All right. Yes. No, just just the tally mark, and it's only one one tally for every animal. And if they say the same animal twice, they uh, they don't get the get a tally. So it's for every different animal. Okay, ready? Go for it. screener and what that does is gives you kind of a, a baseline of where you are right now um, we we say you know you can do this real quick and easy at home and you can do it once a year or every few months to see where you're at and you know that the national average is I think 10 or 11 in one minute so I think everybody was doing okay but you also have to think that even though that's the national average, that's not your number. So you have to look at your number and see, you know, if you're staying about the same or if it's decreasing every time you're doing it. And if it's decreasing, then that's something that we may want to pursue and come in and to do a memory screener as well. Did y'all like freak out when I said you had a minute to do it? Did your mind go blank? <laughs> Whose mind went blank? Very, very, we, we all get nervous when there's a time limit. Um, does anyone have any questions for me? So as a normal individual, well, I don't know if I'm normal. Normal. <laughs> so, I mean, is this something that like you should do? I mean, even personally, like every year? So I, I did pretty good today. <laughs> so in a year from now, I gotta see if I do the same. I can just keep a little note in my purse. <laughs> Pull it out and review it. I mean, is this something that normal people should do? Like, like how many animals can you name in a minute? Yes. So we say everyone, we, we think everyone should have a memory screener once a year because it gives you that baseline. So that first one is, is, is your baseline. 
and then we can compare for the years after and and see your trend and kind of how your um your chart is looking essentially so um it it has your uh, your results and if it's staying you know pretty normal quote unquote then you know it's, it's on your your norm um but if it's starting to maybe downtrend or you're um increasing or you're kind of kind of going like this then um then we can talk about that later but yes we we say that everybody should have a memory screener because it gives you good information um about where you know general information about where your memory is so i used to have growth charts on the wall for my kids mm -hmm. yeah, this is my there you have a new you have a memory chart there you go wait i'm not going to tell anybody what it is though yeah <laughs> Can I interject something? You know, you can do this at home with your loved one, your sister, your brother, your husband, someone that you can do this with and keep the, you know, and so be each other's advocate for each other. Watch out for each other to see if you're seeing some dementia. And so it's kind of fun. And like you said, I think that's great. Keep a, a chart growth like you were a child. And um, every year go back and say, okay, where are we now? So it's always good to get a partner. And it's, it's a good time to, in case you, if there's someone that you're concerned about, if you all have been doing this together all along, or if you do it as a team, it's not a big deal for mm -hmm. that person. You're not really putting them on edge or on the defensive to say, let's do this, because it's something you've been doing all along. So when you need it, it's already a part of your routine. <laughs> if you're going to do it every year, it might be a good idea to switch, not do animals every time. So um, boys' names, fruit, furniture, these are all things that are on these nationally mm -hmm. um, tallied tests, and so the averages are further. Because what you may be doing is just learning a lot of animals um, and getting better over time. That, we, we know that happens. So, right, you, you may be practicing animals instead of testing them. <laughs> Good information, good information. I have a question. Oh, yeah. Let me jump to you. <laughs> okay, so my question is, do you talk uh, during this form about, like, how does nutrition affect your memory and how does, like, distractions, like the cell phone, how, I mean, has that actually increased the, the dementia and the, and the things that you're seeing as far as people... Like I was going down this list and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm like half on the other side of forgetting things. And I wonder if it's because of distractions from cell phones, distractions from just trying to do way too many things. And, mm -hmm. But you know, not on the other side. I'm, I'm like on the side where, you know, it's a scary side. Mm -hmm. So are we going to talk about that too while we're over here? Like, do you, does, do does you touch on? have a lot yeah. to do with mm -hmm. it? Oh. Like, I just wanted to see what is it. Stacy Han will be addressing the nutrition portion. Did you have a question? I thought I saw a hand raised, sorry. And one other thing to say too is someone who has a degree, you know, for like the animals thing, um, who is someone who has a degree in zoology or veterinary medicine, they may have a more higher knowledge of someone who um, of animals than someone who doesn't. So that's important to take into account. So their number may be 45 for one year and for them to get down to 10 or 11 as the national average, they would have lost significant cognitive ability. So it's always good to keep a tally of things and to, to for that person, if they go from 45 to 35, you know, the next year, that's something to look at, and, and you can watch for that trend of, da of data as well. Any other questions? All right, well, thank y'all very much. And again, we'll be around after as well if y'all have any questions, um, if y'all want to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, go on a break. Yes. Quick break. We're going to take a quick break and everyone have a cup of coffee or some cookies and then we'll start back with Stacey Hand. <laughs> 